Hi, this is Robert Bolaños. I uh, am in my lab and I'm going to show you where I uh, wind my transformers and some of the tools that you would need to wind transformers. So this is my setup or my, my tools that I use. Probably the most important thing that you need or the tool that you need would be your winding machine. Uh, there's some models that are, they have a motor and with a pedal, uh, pedal switch. And when you press the pedal, it rotates. But I have a much simpler one. This is a Chinese made uh, winding machine. You can reset the zeros here and then you can wind. And as you turn the crank, it counts the number of turns. Uh, what's nice about it is that you have control. You can either use the crank or you can turn the chuck. You can turn the chuck manually when you're turning. So this is a nice piece of equipment. Now, I think I bought this, if I recall, I bought it off of uh, Amazon. I think you can, there's two versions. There's a version that has a screw that goes all the way across and it's kind of thick. So those are kind of limited. The one that I would recommend would be get the one with the chuck. Once you have the chuck or you get the one with the chuck, then you can use the different types of attachments to make sure that you can attach your, your bobbin. In this case, what I'm using is this is a spade drill. And what I did is I cut the, the pointy part and then to make it fit, I put tape and some shrink tape here. That way it fits nice and snug. So it's a very snug fitting. So this is my setup as far as uh, my winding machine is concerned. Okay, next is you need a soldering iron. That way you can either solder the wire to the terminals or to the pins and having that is very convenient if you don't want to solder what you can do is you can also wrap the wire around the pin so it's just your choice whether you want to wrap it around the pin or you want to go ahead and solder it and get that that out of the way so that's that's what i have here then here i have a set of tools once you wind your transformer especially if you're doing let's say a flyback and you need a specific uh, ace of l or a specific inductor value then you can grind the center of the magnetic core so in this case if you want to put a gap there you can use these files these are the diamond coated files so get yourself a set of diamond coated files. They're very indispensable because if you use just the steel plated files, they won't work. The, the, the ferrite is just too, too hard. Another thing that you need is some uh, scissors. And typically I prefer the smaller type. This one's this is my favorite one. It's nice and small and compact. And you can use this to cut the wire or you can cut the tape. So this is very, very convenient to have that. Then another piece of tools that you would need or that I would recommend is these are just wooden dowels. And these I bought them off of Amazon. And the way the reason you need them is as you wind them you want to be able to push the wires next to each other so this is a very good way of uh, pushing or squeezing or putting the wires next to each other uh, since you're using wood you don't have a or oh, you have you're less likely to scratch the enamel so this is a very soft wood so they're practically almost impossible to scratch the enamel off of it. Okay. 
Another thing that you would need sometimes is a little vise. I also bought this off of Amazon. This is uh, metal. And you can hold little things here, which is good. So a little vise is important to have. And then I also bought, this is a Knipex. It's a wire stripper. You put the wire in here. Let's see. Here's a little piece of wire. And basically you, it'll scrape it off. Okay. So that's the way to do it. Now, if you don't have one of these, then you need... If you don't have the Knipex, then you need to get yourself some very sharp uh, blades. So this will do a nice job, provided that they're sharp enough, they'll do a really good job in stripping the enamel off of, especially the fine wire. Like this is, I believe, a 30, 32 or 34. So this does a very good job. Of uh, stripping that okay so then you also need an assortment of uh, cores here's a RM12 core and I believe this is a EFD 20 course and then you also need some bobbins to go with that so you can have your bobbins and then once you wind your transformer you can put your cores in there and then you put tape around that here's an example of one that is already gapped so this is where you would use if you need let's say you get cores that are not gapped then you would uh, use your diamond coated files to gap them so you got that. So now you also need an assortment of different types of uh, Captown tape and Mylar tape. So you have different types of width. There's uh, this is, I believe like three quarters of an inch. And then you can get them up to one quarter. And if you don't have the width, you can cut these and uh, fit them to the size of your bobbin. So you need this for your insulation material. Okay, once you have your tools and cores, then you also need assortment of wire sizes. So here I have a 30, 20, I've got a 22 here, and a 22 here as well. So you need magnet wire so the more uh, variation of magnet wire, the more versatility uh, you have. Once I have the transformer wound, then the next thing that I need to do is to test, make sure that I'm measuring the correct inductance. So for that, I use the Bode 100. And here I'm showing a coil craft it's a 15 micro henry inductor and uh, so basically I'm doing a impedance measurement over frequency because as you all know that the impedance changes over uh, frequency so this is a very important piece of tool if you can get one if not the then I would recommend a LCR meter a good LCR meter that can work up to 100 kilohertz or whatever the switching frequency that your power supply will be working at. So these are the tools that I use to verify that my transformers are working correctly. So here is my transformer making bench. Uh, I'm showing all of the tools that I that you need or that I use to wind a transformer and then test 
make sure that it's working. So hopefully you can get some of these tools and maybe start winding and testing some some of your transformers. Uh, actually, it takes a little bit of patience to do to wind a transformer, but in the end run, you get a level of satisfaction of being able to say that you actually built your own transformer. Okay. Well, if you like this video, please subscribe and share. And any comments or questions you may have, please send them to my email. Thank you for watching.